the myth, the legend, McCullough D44, McCullough's second direct drive, but their first one to have the bar on the right side. I have a video explaining their first one. But this was the saw right here that changed it all, that led the path for McCullough. With finally going to a direct drive with a powerful engine in it. I think 72cc, I think it is. This thing, I've seen them pull up the 32 inch bars with skip chain, cutting through Douglas fir, Pacific Northwest. It changed forever with the sound of these roaring through the woods. This one right here is an excellent example. But this one did, I don't think it's still the Pacific Northwest. No, we're here in Indiana with this one. So, backstory on this. Uh, this video will probably come out and then we'll hopefully see it in action if we can get it running. So, an older guy named Owen, he, uh, he runs a sawmill up at the Ileana Power Show. Um, he says uh, he got my information and called me and said, hey, would you like to have a log to run up here? The sawmill guys want to know, they're saying, you know, what's chainsaws without a log as an example. So they're hooking me up with a log to be able to use. And then he also brought up his great uncle bought this brand new. And these were made, I think, from 58 to 59, I'm thinking it was. And bought it new. It Obviously, it ran at some point. But he said it would get finicky, the carburetor. Throughout the years, it was finicky. You know, you put it away for three to four weeks, and it was hard to start. You know, and that sounds like a typical McCullough thing. You know, haha. -ha. But people have been inside of it before. Plenty of witness marks to it. You know, the uh, gas tank here, it's had the screws, all have marks on them, having been in it. This thing is just, it's a, it's a beast, it's a monster. The chain looks almost original. I'm thinking it's original to it. The clutch I already looked at, it looked original. The oiler works. I tried that out with him yesterday. He was right there. He power washed it. It was like all greasy like this. He said it had, it's been like 15 years since it ran. But it was all completely covered in grease. He power washed it. There might be some residual water still in some spots and everything. But we'll go ahead. Let's look at that carburetor here. These ran a governored system on them. 7,500 RPM, I think it was. Air vane governored. So the throttle link is just not actually physically touch. It, it doesn't physically hold onto the carb. There's a spot for it, but it doesn't actually sit in it. See down here? So your throttle is independent of your carb. There's a wind vane governor over here that if you give it too much throttle, it'll push it back to close. Down here where my this finger moving, there's a wind vane governor. It pushes on that when there's enough wind and it'll air vane limit it to about 7,500 RPM. It was adjustable. A lot of guys back in the day would completely bypass that and just put this inside of a slot here and just full throttle run it like that. Or they would, they would cut the uh, air vane off so that it couldn't run and it would just run wide open and they just fully close it. That's how they buy it, that, because time was money back in the day. You know, the more trees you cut down, you got paid. From what I read, it was like uh, some places it was a thousand board foot before you started getting paid. So, you kind of you kind of had to do what you had to do to feed the family, even if it was at the sacrifice of Saul. This one, been repaired, as I had seen. Somebody saved the starter right there. A nice little weld job on it. And these are magnesium, from my understanding. Those are magnesium, so welding that is not an easy thing to do. It's cheaper back then to weld this than to get a new part. So it's got a little, she's had her bumps and bruises. Muffler is no exception. It has a, it's, it was welded on instead of buying a new one. There's a couple weld spots here where they put the fins back on, brazed it back on. Must be running an original spark plug on her. The chain, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna start soaking that. We'll get the bar and chain off of it. And we'll get to looking at that carburetor, get more uh, more space here on her. I think we're gonna have a good runner here. And I know it has really 
good compression. It's it's really, really good. That's still a little wet on the inside from being power washed, but he didn't want to give it to me greasy, which was fine. It's fine. Say, on and off switch. It, it's pretty stiff. Let's see if we can free that up too. Cut that bar and chain off. So one pain in the ass design, I'm glad McCullough designed out of this was the bar and chain tensioners. The early ones were atrocious. Absolutely atrocious. And I'll show you here in a sec as soon as I get this off. Oh, she is covered in grease. Looks like it threw a chain quite a few times because, well, the bar tensioning thing was just terrible. I believe we can save that chain. It's just a little dirty. We'll spray her down and with some WD-40 start cleaning the stuff off of it and then we'll get some other stuff on her. Maybe hit her with a wire brush, put her on the sharpener. But we gotta see if she's gonna run first. Put the nuts to the side. No tensioner. Foot oh, stepped right on it. There's no tensioner built into these right here. That later on they designed it to where it was right here. Made it so much easier. The starter feels immaculate. This feels real good. And we got our bar plate thing here. Looks like it's taken quite a few scrapes in its lifetime. How do you get it off? I can't even get that past the clutch. Is there a manual to this thing? Yeah. Can't even get that off. See? It's literally in the way of the clutch. That, that's not right. Uh, well, I guess it's never coming off. So we gotta fight this bar and chain out of its adjuster, which is built into the oil tank on these. Oh good, the chain is not. So this bar, thankfully, you can pull it straight out so we don't have to take that piece off. That's a nice 24, it was a 23 inch cut area bar, but that's a nice bar. We'll get her cleaned up for you, Owen. Awesome gentleman there contact me and do that. It was like original clutch on this thing because these had a retainer things and everything. It was a bit over engineered but for their first go at it it was not too bad. And the chains off of these can be a pain in the butt. You have the, it, it wasn't it was thought out it just wasn't thought out if you know what I mean. It And you have to turn it sideways to get it out. But the chain, she's starting to seize up. It's a nice Oregon chain, so it's not an original. Nice Oregon 51. We can save that. That chain's easy salvageable. Very easily salvageable. Overall, nice power head unit here. I say this, uh, I don't want to question what's going on here. Why is that? I mean, I've never... My D44s have never had it or anything. It's some weird bar space and think, but we'll have to leave it there. Oiler looks clogged up with oil. And crap. I mean, it still worked, but it's got a lot of crud in it. Yeah, see. Now she's still doing some good cutting in her day. But as proof, oil works fantastic. Let's see, it still has. Oiler works fantastic. We do not have to mess with that. So, positives. Let's look into that carburetor. Trash app before the carburetor. Let's see if it even has any spark. We got to get that out carefully. One quick way to identify a D44. They were the only ones to have that center spark plug that I that I know of, of this series of this looking. They were the only ones to have that center spark plug right there on the head and it's angled slightly upward Ooh, she's a big one. looks to be almost an original now how big are you get that oh that's a big one because we're going to try to get this running for the show 
in a week, in the week after, hopefully the video comes out of the show with this as an example cutting again. And it's been, he says, 15 years since it's it's ran. That is a old AC. I can't even, I don't even think you can cross reference M45 Mar Marine plug. Oh my goodness. That's probably why it was running weird. Probably gonna have to source another plug. Run a little rich. I'm not sure what oil they were doing, SAE 30 or McCullough oil back in the day, but. And the good part about also with these, the points are right here. It was a good and a bad. There's a breaker rod on a camshaft on the cam on the cam here. Uh, not the camshaft, the crankshaft, and it pushes up to open the points and goes through here. That can sometimes stick on you. So, and these were also susceptible to moisture getting to them. If the gasket didn't do its job, water get in, you'd lose your ignition. So it was a, it was kind of a flaw. It was it was good but bad. Under the flywheel protected it a lot more. So, but it was also more moving parts and stuff like that. And in the world of things, if you can simplify something, it's probably a good idea. But so our switch. I don't think I'm gonna be able to even turn it fast enough. I gotta get some lube down inside. Something down inside that cylinder. Turn it up here on its base. Pretty big carbon buildup on the inside in there. Lube it up. There's something at the bottom end. Oh yeah, it's got spark, holy shit. Huh, just rotating by hand, which means it's got a good set of points on her. I mean, that's a hot blue one. Uh, camera's not picking it up. Y'all have to spin it up here. Give me just a sec. I'm going to get in the drawer here. Get the drill out. We'll get you guys a good look at the spark. I think that's a 916 for the clutch, so we can spin her forward. Which means if it's got excellent ignition, we're not having to mess with it. We don't have to touch that. Alright. Looking right there at the plug. Oh, is it bigger than a 916? It's. Oh, it's got a lock on it because it didn't use locking ones back in the day. It's got a lock nuts back in the day. So I'll press the lock out of the way. Yeah, this is a very, very original saw. This is awesome to be able to work on. So I had a locking mechanism that folded over the nut there. I'll just put it back. Don't forget, don't, don't only forget to do that. So I'm like, I know it's a 9 16 I've done this many times. Now on camera it shows it inconsistent, but it's hitting every time because the frame rate of the camera. So we'll go ahead and we'll bend that back really quick. But yeah, he said that uh, nobody wanted to mess with the soul of the saw years ago, which I understand. This is built in the 50s. So finding parts for it is it's kind of difficult. A lot of these ended up. A lot of these ended up uh, getting turned into car engine clones, like the bodies of these would go into the MC-10 bodies, uh, engines and stuff from the set from the ADCC series, from the S44A and 170. They would take this cover, this cover, the head, put those on those engines, and you'd have an MC-10 clone. So a lot of these, that's what happened. But we have excellent ignition. So, you know what that means we're going to try to do here first, right? Yeah, we're going to try to fire it up really quick. I'm going to go get my fuel mix. And then, we'll look into that carburetor. Eh, need to mix more up. That's what I can do here. Did you all enjoy the snowmobile video for those that watched?
Why don't we start this with a drill? Hair protection. Will it be first start in like 15 years? Or a fail? Oh, shoot. Duh. I should just leave that bit back for the minute. It's not like it's going to fly off. First start. I think I need a more kick ass set of drills. Probably stuffed with WD 40. I can smell it. But I think it's all that WD 40 I put in. So we saw it had excellent spark. WD-40 in there. Just trying. She's trying. She's smoking. I'm mix up more fuel. Try this again. Something that resembles flammability. I think I had just a little bunch of WD 40 down on her. Oh, wait. Oh, yep. Not going to do any good there. I'm thinking that spark plug. I'm thinking that spark plug, it sparks out, but inside, it's not. I've had that problem. We're gonna go fix that right now. All right, spark plug came without. Spark plug out of my D44, which is a proven runner in it. Yep, that's the problem. Oh look, the nut's coming off. <laughs> all right, well I guess the nut will come off. I'm, it may need to actually come off all the way to... Okay, so we know it's gonna try to run. Let's see if the... Just undo this. I don't wanna hear it sputter up faster, but I'd have to put the bar and chain back on. That was one thing about this, sorry, yelling syndrome. It's kind of a thing with them is the right side starts. You have to put the bar and chain on it to be able to get the cogs and everything to line up properly. I mean, I guess you can use washers. I've done it before. But yeah, we'll try one more time. If nut comes off, then hey, we can just pull the clutch off, right? Oh. Duh! Turn your switch on. Oh, that's off. Oh, it was on. Oh, wait. Yeah, hook your spark plug back up. Why don't you yell at me for that? Why don't you all say that to me? We're done with feeling. Hey, that's nice. That's a beautiful sound. Like a little more revs, but and we're clearing out some cobwebs in her. Good enough. And the nuts coming off, which hey, that's not a bad thing right now. I actually have locking ones I'll put on there. I'll put a locking one on it. Or I guess we could leave it original. But trying to crank it over though. That's going to make it a pain in the boot. All right, so we know it's going to run. We know it's a spark plug problem. We'll undo that so we can... 
What do we want to do first? We know it's going to run. Let's look into the carburetor. Shall we? Okay, so the carburetor in question. Underneath this plate, I have a kit right here. You can find them all day. eBay, Amazon. Amazon has the same kits on a eBay and get it to you over one day delivery. That's what I did with this. Because I'm on the second to last day of my vacation and then after that it's back to work. And then four days and then the show. 716 wrenches. I have some that have modified already in a past video to be able to fit. Just don't know what combo I need to fit and everything. So I've ground down the side of this one, modified this, but the, those are these are more for like the different top tank ones that are behind me. These are deep ones, so they work out a little bit better. But I ground these away to be able to rotate the wrenches, get into the carburetor, and these are just cheapo Amazon ones. Super cheap. They do the job perfectly. See what I mean? Get right in there. Get you a set of these for this job they work best on that side of the gas tank and you can also get more throw on this side with them you don't have to oh wait yeah these ones this was one of their design flaws that they did back in the day and they fixed it you have to take the nuts and bolts all the way out on this this is an early one I think because it has the top mounts Later on, they revised a bunch of stuff, but one thing if I know about McCullough, they pushed out a product pretty quickly, and it didn't have much R&D, and it was later on that it's consumer feedback helped them out a ton on stuff, but let me go see if I can get that one on there. But the later models, you were able to just loosen these up and pull the carburetor straight up. This one, you have to pull them all the way off and I'll tell you this one this nut right here is not having it at all I mean, I'll finally get a wrench on it after, after I do it like that get it contorted but yeah somebody's been in the carburetor before it's super clean unless he rinsed it took the top off but I don't think he did let that drop, that one drop. It's not going to go anywhere. I'll have them back in its spot here in a minute after we get the carb rebuilt. There's no fuel in the tank. The tank looks good. There you go. Just let it drop. All right, undo your choke. And then there's no actual physical linkage holding it, like I said, so, well, it fell into place there. But that's what some guys would do. They would put this in here, and then they could rev it to the moon, or they'd modify it. But an HL19B, fuel lines attached, which, oh, no, it does have a holder on it. Okay, I didn't, well, this side does, but it has a very poor holder on the carb. We're going to be replacing that with Tygon. Gasket. There you go. And it's a baby, baby carb. See? Reverts to wide open throttle automatically, and then your lever for your throttle closes it, and then as you just let, you're letting it to relieve pressure and shut. But if that were to slip past it, this thing would wide open throttle on you. So, kind of a danger, danger moment there with that. Intake looks clean. I mean, the castings, everything in here looks immaculate. Very, very immaculate looking. Look at that. Look how clean that is. Can't say anybody's been in here. You can see original tooling marks, but I don't see any of the tabs been over for, like, the intake or nothing. It didn't do any weird running away when I tried to start it or anything. Got some paper towel residue, which that'll go bye-bye get this cleaned out here in a bit but yeah this is I see tightening marks here there's tightening oh yeah just tightening there's a couple loosening so I'm thinking somebody's been inside the tank before 
after production because I can't imagine that these round off marks would be from the factory but who knows anybody knows let me know in the comments I mean this is definitely not an original fuel hose it's yeah that's no good we're gonna be changing that let's get this carburetor tour open dip a dip all right so make sure you remember your clocking of this piece right here because we'll probably take it off and it's right in that area for now we're gonna just take all these off and definitely been in here a few times you can see the trying to over tighten stuff Most of the time with these Max, it could be a carburetor issue. Um, I've heard of air leaks on the cranks. I've never, I've had a couple like that, but out of the majority of mine I've gotten, no, it's not what the case is. I'm trying not to pry up on that plastic. Pry up on these little points right here. Twist, pops apart, and then get under the next one and do the same thing. Oh, the diaphragm feels pretty good in it. That's a nice diaphragm right there. I remember 15 years ago that they were running some weirdo, f uh, years and years ago they were starting to run ethanol on fuel. So, uh, there it is right there. Fuel pump is uh see how it's stiffened up that is a stiff fuel pump diaphragm so it's not pumping fuel is what the problem is that's why it's acting all iffy get all these screws out it's actually pretty clean in here i don't have any carb spray so i'll have the ultrasonic and then blow it out with air but that's fine yeah that's all stiff right there that fuel pump that wasn't going to do anything so there's your problem fuel pump diaphragm stiffened up. That blows through really nicely. May not even take that off because it starts to leak and the ones that come in these kits sometimes are not good, but it blows through nicely. Fuel can easily get through that. This, is, this feels really good right here, but I can see it hardening up from the uh, fuel, modern ethanol fuels and stuff. Needle and seats in these are generally good too, because the kits nowadays don't have good ones. They, they don't fit properly, if you will. Needle and feet, needle and seats doing its job. It's not even sticking. Probably leave that alone. Well, take it out and then leave it alone or whatnot. I'm thinking it was just our fuel pump diaphragm, to be honest see what our adjustments were on the high half one half two Ooh, it was a bit open two and like an eighth so still take everything apart ultrasonic clean it but I'm thinking that was our problem so that's our high speed Low speed, we're gonna recount it. Yeah, because the high should only be like one on these. Half, one, half, and an eighth. So yeah, one and a half. One, one and a half is pretty good area for a low. It was having fuel starvation problems is what I'm seeing. And then it just finished hardening up. So somebody didn't, it's, you don't see kits like that i'm assuming if somebody was in here before they didn't even bother like changing those out or anything or i mean they could have been using an oe kit i guess but the needle and seed are in fantastic shape they're not even doing anything bad they're actually i'm happy to see that they're working because like i say the ones that comes in these kits that thread pitch is different and stuff if you could spend if you want to spend 65 dollars or 45 or however much you can go get a full-on kit but that's an expense and a half 
and that's supposed to technically have sealant on it. Just from the factory it did. That's a spot for fuel to leak right there. Hold your needle in. Later on they went with a, just a screw on the inside. They were smart. Uh, we're just, you know, we're just gonna leave you there. That. And then to get that out, there's a special socket that I've had to grind down. Just, you know, God forbid, something be simple. Very, very careful on this. Sometimes they're stuck in there pretty good. Oh, that one's right on the money. Oh, the rubber part fell out. Hmm. Get a needle in there. Sway it out. Yeah, it's not using a needle. Uh, here's a pick. That might. Oh, uh, it'll slip right back in. Huh. And then there's a copper washer down in there for sealing or brass or whatever they decided to use that day. There it is. Don't forget about that. Other than that, it's pretty legitimate. Oh, see? There's another jet setting I crammed in there. And all the way in, that was another way to feed jetting and stuff, but for highs and lows. Kind of universal on their carburetors for who they were making. But that is ready for the ultrasonic cleaner. All rubber bits and stuff are out. Put her in there, let her cook. All assembled. A little bit of that, uh, seal all on that. Reassembling this is the greatest, funnest thing in the world. I'm lying. I'm just kidding. It's not that difficult. Somebody really sanded those down. So back in the day, there would be, uh, well, there wasn't, but modern ones had these little parts where it could seal. A gasket could seal. It had, like, raised parts all around, so it would dig into the gasket. Not sure which side that used to be. Okay, so this is the gasket side. This is where the gasket goes. So that was something, because this, yeah, it's got a gasket on it. You see that? So remember your gasket orders too, how that goes, but they later on improved that, put a little wall around it, everything. Getting the gasket orientated is my biggest thing. Day. Remember my first day. First time I ever assembled a Tilly carb. I didn't get it wrong. I just spent forever looking at a diagram of how to do it. Like, what order does everything go in? And this is what I pay with. Really, the thing you're paying with with the cheap Chinese kits or whatever. The gaskets. They do work. They're not bad. So that goes... That does, wait, what? Am I doing? Oh no, that goes like that. Okay, so I kind of want to do here to help things line up. Sometimes, most of the time, that don't. You know, this has little nubs on it, so that helps out a ton. There's your nubs. They'll line up just like so. If I get things orientated correctly but this uh this is a teflon this is ethanol pretty ethanol proof modern fuels and stuff it works with all the fuels and everything so use it and be done just having an idiot attack here of where to orientate stuff oh, okay that goes there there that means that slides on to nope nope Where's all the screw holes go? Well, that's a pump right there. That's a pump hole. That's where I should have put my screws in. There we go. That's where I just need to put two of these through. Should have done that the first time. 
Yeah, one side's a gasket, but the other isn't. But it was rubberized back in the day. I, it, I don't know. It's weirdo stuff. Your pump, so you can put it down here first if you want on the nubs. But your pump goes first. Your gasket, remember. You're assembling like this, gasket, then your pump. You're doing it upside down like me to line up the holes and everything, which you kind of orientate it off of this, this top part here. There's that, and then your gasket. You gotta get those in the right order the first time. You're gonna be tearing back into it. Oh, no. Okay. You wouldn't think lining up a circle would be difficult, but it is. There we go. Look at that. I had a 50% chance of getting it right. And then, line everything up again. That's level. That's working out great right there, so I don't, I shouldn't have to worry about that. And just put your screws in. This is actually like a super clean carburetor right here that... <laughs> compressed air got it finished cleaned up and it does come with the gasket right here for that we're going back up I have the old one right here I put some uh, seal wall on both sides to kind of give it a rubberized but we'll see how well the new one fits it like I say without those slots in the top it's a big pain in the butt and I'm glad McCullough there was a few things that they did that redeeming qualities to be able to put these back in and stuff but at the same time they did that just to have it to where the bolts are impossible to get you and you had to make a specialized tool. There's no getting around it. Pretty sure every dealer or something, every certified dealer, uncertified or whatever, had to mod had a modified 7 sixteenths in there for it. And back in the day, I don't know what was considered a cheap tool. I mean, Craftsman, I don't know who was all fighting and stuff, but I always use Craftsman, but I hate to modify one of those unless it has to take on some major torque, but... All right, I'm gonna finish this up and I'll bring y'all back. All right, another fuel delivery problem these were notorious for, these WIC systems. And I told this to Owen about this. That should be able to free flow out very easily when you put your mouth over this and blow it. This one does not do that very well. It isn't doing fuel stuff at all. So there's your next fuel delivery problem. I've done a video on how to fix these of what I've done. We're going to do it to this one. Put your screwdriver in here. There's a spring under pressure. Thing might boing up in your face. Not, you're lucky. Take that out. I already took the fuel line off too. Piece in here you pull out. That's why the fuel was so big, the cap was so big. And then you got to get in here. And I pull out your crusty, nasty wick. It's notorious for clogging up. Very, very notorious. It was a terrible idea at best. I'm going to play some with green Scotch Brite. See, that thing is, despite how clean the tank is, this thing is wretched. I'm going to be fighting to get it out here, so bring you back when I fought it out. Got that fought out, and would you know it, the green scotch bright pad's pretty close to the size. So with minimal cutting here, I know it's a thinner material, but it'll it'll do the job. That's what we got, because it is completely, this thing is shot to complete hell. It's for the holes for the tank to take it off. I don't know why they put those in there. It was kind of a moot point. So, I don't know why they put the holes there for the tank to be taken off with with this. I mean, you don't have to tear apart the tank as part of the design, but I'm not putting the holes in. The only hole that you actually have to worry about putting into it is just that one right there. So, I'll see if I can find a marker here. Mark it. 
and then just cut it out whatever means way you can figure out to do. Which to me it's going to be as exacto knife and cutting a square into it. Do I already have a knife that's opened? Eh, probably. We have spark outside, but not on the inside. Uh, I'm thinking the coil needs baked. I'm gonna have to come back to that here in a bit. Got some stuff I gotta attend to. Probably tomorrow I'll be able to get to that. So it ran good, but I'm feeling something here. I turned my saw over with the plug wire in my hand. I'm feeling it hitting me through the handle right here, and that hurts like hell. I mean, it hurts like hell to do that. I put it up to the spark plug and it sparks. I take it off. Okay, so I installed the carburetor and tried and tried and tried leak. to get it started. And later I find out what the issue yeah. is. But I had to get it down a half shocked. hour of recording, let alone a couple hours over where you all off see it. of figuring out what is going on. on and it turns still. out the points I'm not touching the body or on anything this with are kind of special but... at their gap size. But here we go, at least hearing it start to run. See that? So did the quick solution here, wrapped it up in tape, and I'm pretty sure it was grounding somewhat to the body here, but wrapped it up in tape. I'm not, yeah, I'm getting a little bit of something still, yeah. still getting a little bit of something it's going through i think just the entirety of the rubber like it's not having life at all right now if you were to actually spark that it would probably ignite yeah i think in the plug head or something it's jumping spark we've got that's what the problem is when it's cutting it out it's, it's trying to get ignition and it's not happening is what our problem is here. So I'm covering all bases. If I wrap this up then I can, if he said if I didn't get it fixed in time then that's fine but um, I'm going to try, like I say, I want to hear it, I want to see if this is it right here. Okay so I've had worse spark leaks than this before and it has still run but I've seen it physically arc on my D44, physically arc out and go to places it shouldn't. So, I, I don't know at this point. I couldn't tell you. We'll open up the fuel and we'll just see what it does. If it doesn't, then it's a potential coil issue at this point. We've got hot spark, hits by hand, but when trying to run under resistance, like I said, it's going to try to do whatever it wants. And go figure clutch. It's not the switch. Like he said, it, it, it acted erratic. It, it, it's like it didn't want to 
it was hard to always start and get running. We've got some underlying problem going on is what it, hold on. No, we definitely didn't burn all the fuel. I put fuel down it. I need to refill my bottle. Alright, went outside, revved her up real good, let it bounce off the rev limiter a little bit. Let's see if she'll fire back up. On and off switch works. kick back so these points on this one are super super i mean finicky i'm having to adjust them on the fly and even trying to tighten the nut down it is so finicky but it fires right up and runs great i knew it wasn't a fueling system fueling systems figured out it's sparking me there's a problem so there's a spark leak it is i don't suspect the coil at all at this point it's it was just spark leak and those points are just beyond finicky. I did spray WD-40 down the, where the rod is to soak down for a while. Just clean it off with carb cleaner, everything, and stuff like that. And So all that should be nice and happy, but it is just, it wants to be finicky. I doubt it's a condenser. That thing just burns bright and hot. I mean, it's in, it's in pretty good shape and everything. And if, if it was, like I said, if it was a problem, it would have shown it. So... I mean, I can't 100% rule it out, but right now it is, it's working great. I mean, it's, everything is working better and better as the saw heats up and runs. Let it heat, let the coil get warmed back up, it can dissipate off and so on and so forth. But overall, diagnostics, it has spark leak through the wire, and, I got, and that needs replaced and everything. But it, what's working now is working now. I could... I could call Owen and ask him, hey, this and that, get it running for the show if he wants me to take it back and everything. But I'm just not going to have time this week. This is that simple. I've got so much to do. But it, I like to say, it fires right up. It runs fantastic. Um, very happy. I'm going to leave this setup sit overnight and then come back tomorrow. i got to get the bar and chain soaking and everything. So I will see you all tomorrow. All right, it's the next day. Um, it's definitely not a fuel issue. I don't know how much of the video I've edited up to this point explaining stuff, but uh, it's definitely ignition related because when it runs, it's running great, but then it just goes back to being temperamental. So there's something definitely up with that. I don't know if it's the condenser is bad, but it's kind of showing symptoms of either condenser and or coil. 
Because when I check Spark, it starts out really bright and hardcore. Like, it's really good. And then the Spark, as I'm rotating it, dwindles down to something smaller. And no matter how much you adjust the points, it's still wanting to... It, it, it just... You either have Spark or you're not, but the Spark is great. But it's just something is not allowing Spark underneath the, com the combustion conditions. So I'm thinking it's possibly a condenser. And I'm trying to think of a saw around here that I can rob one off of. I would like to Nova chip it, but I don't know of any that I can rob a Nova chip off of. That's my problem. So we're going to have to go through a lot today, and I don't know how much filming of this part I'm going to do, but I'm going to explain it after I think I find a fix. But I've been through four spark plugs now, and I've got four sitting on the bench, one inside of here. That's a known good spark plug and nothing. But if it fires up today, then we'll see what's going on. But after it heats up and dies, that tells me that's definitely a coil. But, um... It's just going to be a deduction process now. We know it runs, and when it runs, it runs fantastic. But try to restart it, and it's like, nope, I'm done. And that was exactly what was described, what was going on with it. So I'm thinking it's... I'm going to lean towards a coil, but we'll see what goes on here. So let's see if it'll fire up. If not, then I'm going to start taking ignition components apart and testing and stuff. But the condenser's working. It just isn't working, I'm suspecting. We'll cheat it, give it a little prime shot here. Got plenty of fuel in the tank. The fuel system was just, it was doing absolutely beautiful yesterday. So this is the good known spark plug. Like if I didn't want to start up with that, then I don't know. because the points are gapped as they should be. Yeah, see, something's still... I can smell the gas. It's getting its fuel. It's just not producing spark under compression. Or if it is, it's not enough to fulfill plug actually isn't really that wet check the spark here real quick after that we're just going to go through a deduction oh no there's no ignition today I wonder if it's ignition switch. Yeah, no ignition today. Yeah, no ignition. Get that figured out now. So tightened up the gap. Six it was eighteen it doesn't like. Sixteen it doesn't like. I randomly set it down. Twelve is where we're getting spark at. That is not right. To be getting a spark at twelve. I mean, it, a 12 fits in there perfect. Yeah, a 12 is absolutely shimming in there perfectly. That's a problem. This should be 16 to 18 on a gap. So somewhere there's something not correct with the saw, like from the factory, unless the coil or something. But it is a hot blue spark, and where it's supposed to be, it's not fired. But we'll, we'll give it a try here. But... There's something, something is not happy somewhere. I need to see if I can find a Nova chip, rob it off of something, and see if that's going to do the trick for us, because that's not correct. Because even then I get spark outside, but in under compression it's not...
That was me stopping the clutch to see if it'll handle the resistance, and it does. I don't know. It. Sorry, it's yelling syndrome. <coughs> it's like it wants a tight gap on it, <coughs> and that's a that's a good spark plug right there. That's the easiest it's fired up. We, it may just that's there's something with this one where something wasn't tolerance right somewhere, and it has to have a tighter gap. We'll see if it fires back up. shit alone. <laughs> That's all I can say. So it, it just wants a tighter gap than normal. It, if that's what it's going to take to run, that's what it's going to take to run, I guess, right? I mean, that's probably what the problem was the whole time it needed a tighter gap, but also a spark leak from the plug wire and stuff like that. I don't think he'll be disappointed it wrapped in tape like that. It, if it can run, it can run and stuff like that uh, and everything and whatnot. He's He's a pretty good guy and everything. So carb feels it's adjusted pretty good for the rev up. It comes back down and it's it was happy. But now to hmm. Now do I gotta attend to the bar and chain. I'm gonna let it sit for a little bit here, come back out. If it fires back up, then I'm gonna call that happy-ish. And we'll go from there. But it has been frustrating. So it just it's it's a tighter gap. Good to know. All right, chain sharpened. It's been about 40 minutes. No prime shot, anything. We're going to see if it fires up. I had to reset a few of the teeth on that one, but shouldn't be too much of a problem. So let's see if she's going to crack open for us. On. bar and chain on. Pull her over. Right about there. It looks like a good spot, maybe. We can pull her over by hand for the first time. Let's see what she's got. chain up I knew it was gonna do that it was gonna it slackens up I mean I cleaned it off and everything but tightened it tighter than it was but slackened up a little bit I'll get that tightened up also thanks to Ted a much better air filter than I had this one will actually it isn't completely caked in grease and stuff so we're gonna do that get her out there go make a cut
good runner cutter. A little fat on the top side, but these aren't getting any newer, so all it has to do is demonstrate that it can still cut. Uh, chain cleaned up after the first cut. She's got all the rust off of her. She's happy, ready to go. Um, I'm, I'm jealous this one is not mine. This is a very excellent example of a survivor. Um, knowing the quirk about the points. So that's uh, something I'll have to point out. No pun intended. God, I can't believe I said that. But yeah, it's a good runner. Cutter now. Uh, like I say, a little fat on the top. I'm not letting it wrap out all the way, letting it go off the high rev limiter and stuff. I don't want to burn it up. But uh, overall, she's ready for the show. So I'm hoping I can get this edited because my internet is out for a little bit. It uh, One of the wires is damaged. And I'm probably going to have to edit everything on my phone. At, not on the phone. I could edit on the phone or put it on the computer, put it back on the phone, and then upload it from the phone. Either way, um, I, if, you're, if this is out on the Friday of the 19th, I'm at the show with this saw. And you either have to come there on Friday, Saturday to see me, or at the Ileana Steam Gas Power Association show, or wait till the week after when I can have footage from that and everything. But, Owen, your saw is ready. I'm glad to have worked on your family saw. It's been in your family from my understanding, from what you told me since the beginning, and it's going back. So, just to say thanks for watching, and if you like what you see, like, comment, subscribe. We're going to have more of these on the table. Get back to the supercharged saw and all those other things. It's my last day of vacation. I'm glad it ended like this. So, to, thanks for watching.